Most monitoring systems measure how long something takes or how big it is, like response time or bandwidth. These metrics are best measured using distributions, not averages. Prometheus provides two advanced metric types for capturing distributions, histograms, and summaries. This video explains more than five key concepts you need to know about histograms and summaries in Prometheus. But why do distributions even matter? When creating an alert, you could easily track the average response time, but this can be misleading because a few very slow or very fast values can skew the average. If 9 people earn $100 and one person earns $1,000, the average salary becomes $190, even though 9 out of 10 people only earn $100. Application response times behave the same way. They usually have long tail distributions where most requests are fast, but a few outliers are extremely slow. To understand the typical user experience, we need to look at the distribution of values, not just the average. This is where percentiles come in. A percentile tells you how a value relates to the rest of the group. It answers the question, what percentage of values are lower than this number? If you say your 95th percentile is 100 milliseconds, this means that 95% of your requests are less than 100 milliseconds. If your 99th percentile is 200 milliseconds, 99% of your requests are less than 200 milliseconds. Your worst 1% of requests are more than 200 milliseconds. You can also refer to percentiles as quantiles. The 0.95 quantile is the 95th percentile and the 0.5 quantile is the 50th percentile. Let's say your web app processes 10 requests and you measure how long each one took in milliseconds. The average is the sum of all latencies divided by the number of requests, which is 226 milliseconds. To get the 90th percentile, we first make sure the values are sorted. We can then find the position by dividing 90 by 100 and multiplying the number of entries. This means that the 90th percentile is in the 9th position and 90% of the requests are less than 180 milliseconds. This 90th percentile is much less than the average, giving you a better view of the actual experience of your users. So how can you use percentiles in Prometheus? If you want to learn more about Prometheus, check out my courses on LinkedIn Learning. Prometheus Essential Training guides you through all the concepts you need to understand and use Prometheus in your daily work. You can also build on that and learn how to use Grafana with Prometheus. This one is a comprehensive course that I'm really proud of. As one of the best courses on Grafana on the market, you would even learn how to integrate artificial intelligence into your Grafana dashboards. Both courses are linked in the video description. Histograms collect observations and place them into buckets. A histogram in Prometheus is like a set of label jars used to collect marbles. Each jar represents an upper limit, for example, values up to 100 milliseconds. When an observation occurs, such as a request taking 250 milliseconds, we place a marble in every jar whose label is greater than or equal to the observation. For each bucket, Prometheus keeps a cumulative counter that counts the number of observations less than or equal to the bucket's value. Histograms also expose a count time series representing the total number of observations and the sum series representing the total of all observations. In Prometheus, histograms are computed on the server, not the client. This allows histograms to be aggregated across labels before calculating percentiles. However, you are responsible for deciding what bucket boundaries you care about. Poorly chosen buckets can lead to errors when approximating percentiles. The buckets you choose should be based on your SLOs, which set the operating objectives for your service. Summaries also sample observations and expose sum and count series, but they compute percentiles on the client. When you create a summary, you specify quantile objectives and optional error tolerances. For each quantile objective, Prometheus then exposes a time series with the quantile label. Summaries don't require bucket definitions and provide more accurate quantile estimates, but they have several limitations. They cannot be aggregated across instances. They are fixed at instrumentation time. The client-side computation also adds memory and CPU overhead. So you understand histograms and summaries, but how do you use them? How do you take this new knowledge and make your monitoring better? Let's say you have a product with a strong user base. Your app might be up, dashboard screen, and alerts quiet, but your users could still be miserable. This is where a good SLO comes in. SLO stands for Service Level Objective. It is a target level of reliability that you aspire to deliver to your users. It is not just about the system running, it is about whether it is running well enough for users to have a good experience. 
you will generally define SLOs over a time window. For example, 99% of API requests should return within 250 milliseconds over a day or 99.99% of requests should return successfully in one hour. Some other related terms you should know are SLAs and SLIs. Let me know in the comments if you want a detailed breakdown of those. But for now, let's skip ahead and discuss how to define SLOs using histograms. If your SLO is 95% of requests must complete within 200 milliseconds and 99% within 500 milliseconds, you will choose buckets like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 1. Each bucket represents a fraction of a second. 0 0.1 is 100 milliseconds, 0 0.3 is 300 milliseconds and so on. Each of these buckets should map into how your users feel about delays. For example, people generally consider 1 to 3 seconds a significant delay. It is time for you to learn how to export histograms using Golang as an example. Step 1. Select your buckets. Step 2. Initialize the Prometheus metric. Step 3. Set up a middleware to add the duration of each request. Step 4. Run your application as normal and script the metric from Prometheus. This is simple, right? But how do you then alert if the 90th percentile is more than 200 milliseconds? We can use the histogram quantile function to do the relevant aggregations for quantiles and percentiles. With this function, I can query my app to see what the current 90th percentile is. After validating the results, I can then create an alert that fires if my 90th percentile is greater than 200 milliseconds. Remember that the 90th percentile means that 90% of your requests finished in 200 milliseconds or less, and only the slowest 10% took longer than that. This alert will fire when 90% of my requests took longer than 200 milliseconds. Defining summaries is similar to histograms, but instead of buckets, we define the quantiles directly on the metric. The quantile is then evaluated on the client when the metric is scraped. In this example, we've mapped the quantile objectives with the absolute error required. Ultimately, the summary is not super useful for alerting since it cannot be aggregated across labels. So this has been a lot. Let's recap everything you've learned. You've learned the subtle differences between histograms and summaries. Histograms group observations into predefined buckets and count how many fall into each range, while summaries calculate quantiles based on observed data. Histograms are computed on the server side, while summaries are calculated on the client library, i.e. in your application. Histograms can be aggregated across multiple instances or services, and summaries cannot be aggregated since they are pre-computed locally. The accuracy of a histogram depends on the bucket boundaries chosen, while summaries provide high accuracy for local quantiles. You've also learned about the power of distribution in your alerting and how percentiles get you there. Percentiles describe how most of your users experience your service. The 90th percentile latency describes how 90% of requests were at this level or faster. You've also learned that SLOs allow you to define the expected good experience for your users and ensure you track what actually matters. And speaking of SLOs, you've learned that it's better to alert when user-facing SLOs are at risk, not just on CPU or memory alone.